Hello and welcome to this section of the Algebra Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to continue talking about polynomials and specifically we're going to talk about how to add and subtract polynomials. And so it's very, very important to understand when you can add things together in algebra and when you can't. And when I say add them, I also mean subtract them. Uh, so anytime you can add them or subtract them uh, is something that you're going to have to master because you're going to constantly be dealing with situations where you're simplifying expressions. So you'll have to know when you can add terms together. And in these polynomials, when you're adding one polynomial to another polynomial, how you can actually combine the terms together and make it simpler. That's what you're really trying to do when you add things together. It's to add it together and to simplify it. Um, there's one rule that you need to understand in order to be able to know when to add and subtract polynomials, how to combine the terms together properly. Um, and a lot of students think it's this mystical thing and it gets very confusing, but there's only one rule that we're going to learn in this section and it's so easy once you understand that. So listen carefully. The only way you can add or subtract terms from polynomial to polynomial or for expression to expression is if you have like terms. The only terms that you can combine together and add or subtract, they have to be similar. Let me show you what I mean by that. It's much easier to give an example than just to talk about it. So what if I have, forget about polynomials now for a second, let's just say I have 3y, I'm going to put a comma here, and 4y. And let me ask yourself, or let me ask you, are these terms like terms or not? Are they similar, in other words? The answer is yes. These guys are basically what we call like terms. Right? And the reason that they're called like terms is because they both have y's here. Okay? So this is three y's, three times y, right? Three times the value of what y is. And this is four times y, four times the value of whatever y is. But in both cases, I'm talking about something multiplied by y, and here I'm talking about something multiplied by y. So ultimately, I'm kind of talking about I'm dealing with y. I'm not dealing with y squared. I'm not dealing with y cubed. I'm not dealing by, with you know, y times y cubed or y times y squared, I'm only dealing with y. So these things, even though they have different numbers in the front, they're similar, right? So if I wanted to add them together, for whatever reason, so if I wanted to add these two terms together, the sum would be, what do you think it would be? Well, 4 plus 3 is 7, and I'm still talking about y, so I have to keep my y along for the ride. So if I were to add these two things together, I would get 7y. So when you start thinking in terms of algebra, you need to start thinking in terms of when you can combine things together when, when you're, if you're trying to add them together, right? So here, this is a like term with this because I'm both talking about whatever the value of y is or whatever the idea of what y is, right? What if I ask you, as a similar example, what if I have three apples as one term and four apples? Right? So obviously I'm drawing a comparison because I have three and four, but let's just say I have three apples and four apples and I asked you how do I add them together. Then it would be easy for anybody watching this video to say you have seven apples, right? So I would say the sum is seven, seven what? Seven apples. It makes sense to us when we talk about apples because we know that apples are this nice delicious thing that we can eat. And if I have a bucket of three apples over here and a bucket of four apples over here, it's easy, we understand that we can add those together and we can get seven apples. But when you think about it, the only way that you're really allowed to add these apples together is because you're talking about apples in one bucket and apples